ICU nurse Rookie Duretti, how to safely suction your patients with inline suction. Inline suctioning setups for patients that are going to be in the ICU are going to be a closed system. A closed system is not only beneficial for reducing infection risk, but it also decreases the risk of de-recruiting alveoli because we're not having to break that circuit and provide suctioning for our patients. Plus, since it's already connected to our patient, if we would have to emergently or urgently suction our patient because they're having issues with their airway clearance, or just secretions in general, we can do that very rapidly. One thing that I want to stress when it comes to this procedure is that regardless of what type of sedative or continuous analgesia that your patient is on, you need to inform your patient that you are going to suction them and that it probably isn't going to be comfortable. I have witnessed so many times where people will go in and suction their patient without informing their patient of what's about to happen to them and then their patient going into a full on outburst where they're super escalated, they're you know, completely agitated. And it's like, well, no, duh. You just went in there and pretty much woke your patient up, even though sedation is not sleep. Okay. Sedation isn't sleep, but you pretty much just woke them up in a very uncomfortable manner. What do you think is going to happen? So please, for the love of God, inform your patients that you're going to suction them. The other thing to know is when to suction your patient. So we do not just routinely suction patients. We're not going in there every two hours, every four hours and providing inline suction for our patients. So how do we know? What are the indicators that allow us to say, you know what, this patient needs to be suctioned? Number one, if our patient is coughing and you can see secretions. Number two, if we audibly hear them when we're auscultating our patients. Number three, if we see that our waveform on the ventilator is indicating that they probably have secretions down into their lungs, those would be indications that your patient needs suctioned, not by what hour it is when you go in and see the patient. Because so we can cause trauma to the trachea by suctioning our patients, especially if we don't suction correctly. We want to use medium suction here. We don't want to have it full blast max limit. We want to use anywhere from negative to 100 to a negative 150. You only go in until you meet resistance or your patient coughs. When you're performing inline suctioning, it's really important to continuously be monitoring your patients for complications. And if you see any of those complications start to happen, you want to stop suctioning your patient, remove the inline catheter and address the complications that are taking place. I didn't cover everything when it comes to inline suctioning. Just some of the things that I've witnessed where people people get a little bit hung up on or some things that are simply just not correct. So hopefully you have a little bit more information that you feel confident to perform inline suctioning on your patients. And if you have any questions, comment below and I will see you in the next video.